let's say it's October 31st and one of your friends sends you a file like this. Think it's a cool game, right? So you go and check default properties. Looks good enough. And now you run it. Ah, it says Happy Halloween. How nice of him to send you this great application. Now you can choose between trick or treat. Let's go with trick. How bad can it be, right? Your screen is locked. Uh-oh. You cannot get out. What is this? Your no. screen is locked. What? You cannot get out. Alt Your F4. screen is locked. You no. cannot get out. Your screen is locked. You cannot oh, get out. Your screen is locked. Let you me just turn the out. volume down a Your screen is locked. You cannot get out. Oh. Your screen is locked. Can't do you that. You cannot get out. Your screen is locked. You cannot get out. Okay, I just trashed my speakers. Well, at least Task Manager's going to save me, right? Control Alt Delete. Here we go. Ah, finally, I'm going to get out of this mess. Wait, what? No. No. What? No. Can I just open something? No. Task Manager, come on. No. Oh, crap. I guess the only way to fix it now is to reboot the computer. Thankfully, it was a virtual machine. Well, guess what? That file was created by me in an hour using Visual Studio 2015. <laughs> I actually even uploaded it to Vars Total just to see if anything would detect it. And it seems CrowdStrike Falcon is the only one. Malicious confidence, 98%. Rest of them think it's clean, and rightfully so. So this is just a prank malware. Doesn't do anything serious. Doesn't um, affect the computer in any way. And uh, today I'm going to show you how you can create something similar just for fun or if you want to scare some of your friends. Of course, if that thing would create a startup item and do that every time and maybe, you know, act as a screen locker or ransomware, then yeah, that would be taking things too far. I didn't have any mean intentions, so it was just meant as a joke. Before we actually dive into the code, I'm going to show you the file once again. So if we run it, it pops up with the screen and, um, you have two options, trick or treat. You already saw what happens when you click on trick. Now let's see what happens when we click on treat. As you can see, it opens up a couple of browser tabs. First of all, it's going to subscribe you to TPSC and uh, it's going to open my Patreon page. Once again, these are things that um, you will be able to customize. I'm going to link the file, the entire project, and give you some instructions so that you can customize it to your liking. One thing you might have noticed is that this application does not show up in the taskbar anywhere. So that is another little trick to um, scare people. And it's especially a problem because when you click on trick and it takes over the screen, you can no longer exit it from the taskbar because it just doesn't show up on the taskbar. So how do you close this application? Well, you can just end the process or you can use Alt-Tab. But of course, you won't be able to use Alt-Tab once it has taken over the screen. So lesson to learn, don't go for the trick. Always give kids candy. Go for the treat. So now I'm going to open up the project in Visual Studio and I'll show you how I made this little program. I'm using Visual Studio Community Edition 2015. You can do this using Visual Basic as well. Fun fact, the ransomware Jigsaw was actually created in Visual Basic, as simple as that. If you're an experienced programmer, you probably can make something like this in a few minutes. However, for the rest of you who aren't that experienced, I'm just going to walk you through the code. 
Don't worry, I'll link the entire project in the description so that you can directly use it without having to worry about all these things. But as you can see, I've created two Windows Form applications. The first one basically is the welcome screen that you just saw. Looks like this. Happy Halloween, trick and treat, there are two buttons. And as you can see, we have actions set for both of those buttons. So once button one is clicked, this function loads up and we've defined string URL one, one variable as this URL. So if you want this to be something different, you can just type in the website address over here. Again, we have URL two, another website address. And these commands are going to start the default browser and load these URLs. So you can edit these to whatever you want, and those are the websites that are going to pop up. Maybe you want to rickroll your friends. You can totally do that. For the second button, we are going to load the second form application. So we're creating a new object, and then we're showing that. I have configured the second form properties so that whenever it loads up, it takes over the screen, it stays on top, and it doesn't allow any other application to go over it. So if we look at the code, once again, very simple. We just initialize the form, and after that, inside form to load, we have this function, keyboard hook, and then we have an infinite loop, and we're using speech synthesizer to speak the sentence. Once again, you can edit this to whatever you want, and it's just going to keep repeating the sentence forever because this is an infinite loop. The condition I greater than zero is always going to be met. It'll never be false because we're increasing the value of i from one to infinity. That's it, really. I mean, it's a really simple program. An important thing to note, though, is that you will need to reference the speed synthesizer library before you can actually use this function in your program. So if you don't know how that is, just Google you know, add references to Visual Studio project and you'll know how to do that. For those of you who really don't want to get into the code or any of this nonsense, I'm just going to link the executable in the description as well. So you can just um, load that up and you're good to go. It doesn't hurt to send a few people to the PC security channel, right? Come on, I mean, my content isn't that bad. Now it should go without saying that I do not subscribe to the use of malicious programs for annoying people. And I would not use this unless you're on very good terms with someone. So don't send it to your boss or um, to your teacher or something like that unless you really know them. Because it can genuinely cause trouble to some people if they have some applications open and some important work going on. And they're not really a pro user, they're going to panic. So use it as a joke. That's all. Have fun. It's quite fascinating that something like this, which can be coded in less than an hour by pretty much any 12-year-old who knows how to code, can cause a lot of distress to some users at least. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you have a great time. This is Leo. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.